Ja, Dings hier hochdrehen, so, dann geht das hier wieder los. Achtung, fertig, los. Alles klar, okay. Okay, everyone, so um, let's gather around um, for the next uh, speaker of tonight's evening. Please settle down, uh, shut up and listen to <laughs> Schnelle Bunte Bilder. Give it up, please. Hello. Um, hello, um, we are Johannes and Robert from uh, Schnelle Bunte Bilder. We are very happy to be here. Um, we are a studio for animation and interaction based uh, in Berlin. We came all the way from Oberbaum City. And yeah, we have a nice little studio there and sharing uh, our beautiful office with a uh, um, Fabulous Uli Streckenbach and Ronnie Schmidt and Christoph Knot. So what we're doing is, um, yeah, we are actually three of us. We founded the studio in, uh, together with Sebastian, you see in the back right there, um, in 2011. And it all began um, in 2005 in Halle at the Kunsthochschule Borg Giesenstein. Um, there we studied on the uh, party boat, um, uh, the uh, <laughs> next one? Yeah. MMVR design, which means uh, multimedia virtual reality design. Back then nobody knew what that actually meant, um, especially not our parents. They were, uh, had no clue what we were uh, doing all day. We neither, but yeah, we had to find out. And yeah, so... What we want to show you is some pretty old stuff. So what we did is um, some animation. This um, first animation, animated movie from me, Der Conny a Pony. It had all a good animation clip needs, um, like girls, lots of horses, and man-eating grizzly bears. The next project is... Um, we did a music video for a German independent uh, pop whatever band called the Do Nuts. We had the pleasure to drown them. And Sebastian. Oh, that one. Yeah, Sebastian was like uh, into data visualization. So the other part, it's uh, one part is. Um, animation and yeah, he was in, in the field of interaction design and very much into fashion, as we can see. And yeah, another project Johannes did um, was for uh, Skyens, uh, generated uh, music video. Um, the first work, one of the first works uh, in B4. And the first collaboration with Jochen, who um, introduced us to the art of brewing beer last uh, for the March. Yeah. But another um, project we did uh, at the university, the first interactive installation was at the Max Planck Institute in, uh, in Dresden for um, Genetics, and we had a we, we planned a big installation where the visitors could explore the the work of the scientists interactively. So that was a big step for us because it was just a, a university project without funding. And the Max Planck Institute said, "Oh, well, all right, we will give you all the hardware and support you." Um, and we learned how to do concrete um, terminals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, that was our, our university time and talking about multimedia virtual reality, we want to, we thought this would be the perfect um, opportunity to prove today we are um, really multimedia virtual reality designers. So we, we selected the projects uh, regarding the, the media and uh, the categorized um, story, yeah, the, the project by, by the media used. So, first project, yeah, we start with paper, uh, pretty basic. Um, that was the first project we did here in Halle um, for the Sonic Art Quartet, a uh, classic saxophone quartet music video. Maybe you can, yeah. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you. Ah, yeah. So, um, yeah, that was our f first free work. And we um, had a bunch of ideas and concepts what to do. And so first what we did is we, we dragged the, the, the quartet uh, into a studio and filmed, um, shot some green screen footage from them. And after that, we like uh, threw away all our ideas, including the footage, and started from scratch, which uh, then resulted in, in the idea to to create those sound generated uh, graphics with V4 and then why not paint them all, draw them all by hand, all the 1,337 frames, well, why, why not do that and then afterwards get that digitalized again and then paint another layer over it and so because, yeah, why just not do that? <laughs> Yeah, that, that was the, the, the very bumpy road to, to that music video. Um, next media is projectors. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, we have been young and uh, we have been uh, fresh out of, out of the um, university and we got this great opportunity to uh, work with our first museum. It was a classic... <coughs> Uh, it was a grassy museum in, uh, in Leipzig and uh, at first we're going to show you the documentation video. Uh, ah, the project called Sandscapes. And once again, press play. Are you seeing? Um, this is the end of um, an exhibition about the history of design. So uh, the Grassi Museum is full of design, pro product design, and we got this crazy and great opportunity to get this one big room and to tell, to sum it up at the end, to, to, to tell something, kind of a interactive new way to tell this the same story you have seen as a visitor to the museum but to, to have something more emotional and more interactive with the same topic, like the history of design. And yeah, as you see, we ended up with this full 360 degree interactive projection where the visitor can tilt the room or uh, let grow some flowers or um, play with like this hairy, uh, spliny things. And uh, every, every different scene is inspired by a different epoch of design. So this is uh, actually, this was a photograph part of, um, as part of the making of. So let me switch again. So this was a room looking a lot of days, many days we are sitting in this room with no sunlight, just projectors and a lot of cables and uh, tidying it a little bit up um, and hiding all the cables and at the, at the, at the roof you see like uh, five, four projectors, here are the computers and cameras tracking all the room. And then you have to also, you have to map the room and to calibrate the projectors so you have one big screen. And then if you're lucky everything is working, still working uh, today. And yeah, so if you would like to see it, just travel to Leipzig, to the Kassel Museum. Next media, music. Um, yeah, so we have done music videos and the next step is to do installation with music. And we have been, again, been very lucky to get um, the chance to do a, a exhibition about dance. So. There was this exhibition in Dresden at the Deutsche Hygiene Museum 
with the topic dance and we had the task to get the visitors of a museum to dance. Not so easy. And, um, and we came up with four different concepts and we want to show you two of them. The first is called Step Sequencer and the idea is uh, not to get the people dance to music, but to give them uh, opportunity or a device uh, where they can make music through their movement. And this is what it looks at the end. So this was one installation uh, with the topic of dance and the other installation was also again the end of the exhibition, also a big room, also no uh, restriction what we should do there and uh, we thought it's a really great idea to use fog in a museum. It was not, but uh, at least for some weeks you could see um, ah, this is the media we work with, in this case, light. And the project is called Epilog. And this is what it looks like uh, at the end. Why, why did we choose uh, Fog for, um, for telling, for, for getting people to dance? Because um, as you have seen, we also use the floor and we also use uh, sometimes the walls for, for a represent represent representation of yourself to get the people to move. But as soon as you use Fog and Light as a media, you can use the space around the people. So um, this was the, actually, this was the, 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 the main idea, to not only get the people to look to the floor or not to look at the wall, but to, to look, to, to, re to rise the, the view and to get them interacting with each other. So um, here are some photos of the, of the setup, um, what it needs to, to achieve this. So um, we also installed uh, kind of a, a infrared tracking this is uh, the view of the cameras, two cameras on top of the, of the room, looking at the floor. Um, and if you uh, calibrate it right, you can map perfectly stuff like this toilet paper, which was a, a debug device for us in this case. And um, 
Yeah, and and if you if if you do it all right, it's the uh, the, the setup is pretty pretty simple at the end, but really powerful because you can just project like lines like this and achieve the feeling of a wall out of light around you, which is reacting to you. Sound is changing, and you can walk. Uh, to each other, open the, the walls of light and close it. It's, it's, it was really fun to do it. Um, as long as the fire department doesn't came because of the fog. <laughs> but as long as this, it was really fun to do it. And we have done it several times since then. Um, next media. Next media polygons. Um, <laughs> I was happy to work um, on two projects with the uh, incredible Uli Streckenbach and Ronnie Schmidt. First one is a better safe soil. Um, let's take a look. The livelihoods of people around the world depend on access to fertile soil. Farmers need to own or have long-term access to their lands in order to manage them sustainably. The current political climate often supports highly industrialized forms of agriculture. While providing the means for a quick profit, the soil is exhausted through excessive production. Pesticides, monocultures and intensive irrigation wear the soil out. One thing is clear, short-term interests leave the soil infertile. This also endangers the way of life of many rural people. However, Land movements around the world are asserting their rights with increasing success. In order for large-scale changes to take effect, political okay, solutions um, are necessary. So we're back in the uh, field of animation, which is, uh, again, something completely different than the projects before. Um, this was um, a very, very exciting project because of the um, yeah, great topic. We, uh, it's about the sustainable use of... Uh, of soil and uh, keep keep the uh, fertile soil for um, and how we can the user uh, the the customer can change their their cons consume to yeah be more more e uh, efficient and sustain. Um, so this some um, frames from uh, some character scribbles and a style frame of the uh, supermarket which. Um, Spoiler alert, will get destroyed at the end of the film. So that was kind of a dream come true for me, to destroy a supermarket. Another uh, screen um, I'd like to share is these um, concept arts uh, of the that spider robot things. That was, uh, although the, the client was very, it was really a client from heaven, they were very um, nice to us, but this one was a tough nut to crack to tell them that is... Uh, mandatory and this film wouldn't work without those uh, land destroying spider robot factories but finally yeah, it ended up in the film so that was uh, something we were very happy about um, another um, project that we're um, very passionate about is Junge Helden let's take a look wird ein passender Empfänger gefunden informiert Eurotransplant das zuständige Transplantationszentrum. Ist der Empfänger in einem operationsfähigen Zustand, macht sich ein Team von Entnahmechirurgen auf den Weg in das Krankenhaus, in dem der Verstorbene liegt. Die Organentnahme entspricht in ihrem Ablauf einer normalen Operation und die Wunden werden danach genäht. Anschließend können die Angehörigen in Ruhe Abschied nehmen. Jetzt muss es schnell gehen. Die Organe werden per Auto, Flugzeug oder Hubschrauber zum Bestimmungsort gebracht. Je nach Organ dürfen Transport und Transplantation maximal 4 bis 24 Stunden in Anspruch nehmen. Nun erfolgt die Transplantations-OP. Nach geglückter Transplantation beginnt der Heilungsprozess. Durch die Einnahme von Medikamenten wird eine Abstoßung des fremden Organs verhindert. All right, um, another um, animated short about a very important issue. We, um, Junge Helden is a, is a German NGO, which is um, they are, they are going to schools and, and uh, with a lot of, um, uh, so they're, they're trying to to, uh, to inform the people about organ donation and so it's okay um, to say no, I don't want to donate uh, organs, but it's important to, to make the decision to say yes or no. So that was uh, something we were uh, really um, 
psyched about. So um, we um, yeah did that animation and uh, some details we want to share. Um, yeah, this was uh, there was a lot of um, when Uli first started the project, he always told the, the client, okay. Um, let's be careful with uh, characters because we have to keep the, the, the effort manageable and let's just two or three people and uh, but of course we, within the, uh, the during the process we figured it's quite difficult to tell um, the process um, of, of organ donation without people so yeah finally the place was packed and we had quite some guys there another and another Thing I want to share is the, the insanely detailed uh, helicopter Ronnie uh, did for the um, for the movie. It was yeah just amazing, and I'm pretty sure if you uh, were to uh, 3D print the the model, it was ready to fly instantly. Um, yeah, so much for uh, polygons. Yeah, the famous media called particles. Um, many particles. Um, and the project uh, which uh, made use of it, of this media, uh, we called Momentum. And uh, I will... Ah, and before I start to talk about it, uh, it's a project we, uh, we have done in collab collaboration with Kling Klang Klong, who are also here. And uh, I will speak later about the project we did with them, which is standing there. But uh, let's just have a quick look at the project itself. for turning down the volume, sorry, Kling Klang Klong, um, to talk a little bit uh, about what you're seeing here. So this was kind of the end of a one-year research program or research uh, project we have done together with Kling Klang Klong about music and interactive music, interactive sound, and also interactive visuals. And uh, we ended up in this... Um, yeah, we programmed a particle system running on a GPU in real time, also using V4 at this time again, and uh, using a Kinect. And actually we have done uh, a documentation video which shows it pretty good, what the setup was. So what you see here is uh, Vali, one of Kling Klang Klong. And this is the setup, so we have this real-time tracking with the help of the Kinect of the performer. And um, we, have, we get all this data from the Kinect device. I'm not sure if you're familiar what Kinect is capable of, but you, can, you get a lot of data from it, like skeleton, the joints, where the joints are located in 3D space. You get uh, a depth image. You get the RGB image. And with all this data and different kind of analyzing, you can get... Uh, the qualities of the movement. So how quick someone is moving, um, how intense, how tall he is, how fast he moves, yeah, I, yeah, you get the idea. And uh, all this data 
you can send via network to the sound guys, in this case, Kling Klang Klong, or you can play with it uh, on your own to generate these visuals. So we talked about uh, these different medias, um, what we're using to prove that we are true multimedia virtual reality designer, but we missed one last thing in multimedia virtual reality design, VR. And because of this, we had to do a project like you're seeing there, and hopefully you're gonna use it. Um, we call it M2, because it's kind of a progress of momentum. And uh, actually, we just wanna give you a quick look into it, because uh, we don't want to um, verraten, uh, spoil uh, the experience, but um, so, again, a video about the setup. So what is part of the, of the whole experience? You need an Oculus Rift. You again need, in this case, sound, and in this case, headphones, the camera for the Oculus Rift and the Kinect, and also, again, VVVV, and all this crazy setup. And, um, yeah, if you combine this all to one uh, thing, you ah. yeah, you end up seeing inside the, uh, in the inside the Oculus Rift uh, at the beginning kind of a representation of your surrounding, but it wouldn't be that fancy for someone. For some guys, it's fancy enough, but it wouldn't be that interesting on long term uh, if you're just uh, projecting the, the realistic rendering in real time. Uh, we, we came up with this idea to have this three minutes, four minute trip um, to lose, constantly lose yourself in this virtual reality to transform into a point cloud, into particles and more. And actually, this is just one quick moment where we spoil the thing and then I will stop it and you should do it, do it on your own. But you get an idea, perhaps. And uh, we have done this, uh, the premiere was on the Node Festival in Frankfurt where hopefully um, the same what will be happening here in the pause and after the talks. Um, happened there, so many people using it, having fun. Uh, you don't have to be scared, it's more fun than being scared. You are not scared at, at all, I hope. And actually, that's it. All right, thanks so much to uh, Schneller Bunte Bilder. Uh, um, no, we're going to do a little pause, little pause, little break, yeah. So we're going to do a little break, try out the thing, uh, 10 minute break, uh, be quick, and then Lillian coming up next. Uh, she's already tired, don't, don't make it too long. <laughs>